a bittersweet conference in the, the first one we've done without our spiritual dad, Dave. But we know it's one where we're all being raised up, call it with our callings to go forth. There's no, it's our turn now. See, and, and so we're all got to take up our calling. There's, there is no, okay, we cried, we mourned, now it's time to wipe our faces and do what God has called us to do. Amen? Amen. Now, the concept, it's only forever. Why are we waiting for the benefits of heaven when we've got them right now? I, I, I paraphrased it. But that's kind of what most of the church does, right? Now, one concept that I want to share with you. Uh, how many here are getting older? <laughs> yeah, bring it up. I mean, the process started when you were born, right? And, and so the concept of the world uh, is going to be kind of like this little video clip. It's going to show about a minute of it. Uh, you all know this song, and, and just let's see how we relate to it. Go ahead, Karen. I was in my early 40s With a lot of life before me When a moment came that stopped me on a dime I spent most of the next days Looking at the x-rays Talking about the options And talking about the sweet time I asked him when it sank in this might really be the real end How's it hit you when you get that kind of news? Man, what'd you do? And he said I went skydiving I went Rocky Mountain climbing I went 2.7 seconds On a bull named Blue Manji And I looked deeper And he said, someday. You want to keep playing it? Isn't that a great song? But, but as, as I was listening to that song, as I was getting ready, God, God stopped me. Because most of us are in a position of this lack, like we only have so much time. That God has created a short amount of time, and so you got to do everything you can do in that short amount of time. you got to live this fulfilled life, and the things that they're giving us to live that fulfilled life are externals. Now, the song, Live Like You Were Dying, no, live like you will never die. See, we, we've got this... We're going to live from this age to this age, and as we get older, uh, I haven't got all out of this life that I could, so I'm going to have a bucket list. How many have ever made a bucket list? And God's saying, you, you kind of got this backwards. See, it's a mindset. It's a belief system, because in Christ, we have eternal life. We will live forever, and we've got to start letting that forever mindset get in us. And it's not about what I do on the outside, the externals. It's about what I believe on the inside. And that's how it, cha it changes how I experience everything in life now. Now, you know, my testimony of, you know, grew up with four brothers. Parents got divorced at an early age. And so I was out getting in trouble at an early age. Uh, my, my parents loved me, but they just weren't around. So I got in a lot of trouble, did a lot of drugs, became a drug dealer. And this street right out in front of this church was my stomping ground, my hood, where I sold drugs, where I got in trouble. Until one day, I was in a car, a Jeep with some guys, and we were partying. And we drove up this, doing some hill climbing, and I went off a cliff. And that cliff was 22 feet, the Jeep 
went forward. We landed on the hood, and, and I was out for a minute. And when I woke up, it did not feel like I was in heaven. And, and I made the decision that I've got to do something different about life. But even as I've grown, even as I've understood this, I, I, I know this now. Eternal life does not start when you leave this body, when you die physically. Right. Eternal life starts when you get born again, when you Come receive on. the Spirit of God in you. So I don't know if you get this, but right now you are living eternal life. Right. So are we starting to get our mindsets, our hearts in that place of experiencing what God has already done, what's going on with Him now Amen. while I'm walking on this earth? But, but we're deceived and intrigued and uh, by what's put in front of us every day and, and new cars and new houses and new jewelry and everything. And those are nice things. But it's this whole concept to try to get you to not focus on what real life is. The life that God has. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And, and so Zoe life is a quality of life as God lives it. It's a God kind of life. It's the way, and so he knows how to live it. But we've been getting sucked into the world's way of living it. We can start living forever right now, somebody. Uh, I want you to see this eternal life now. Say that with me. Eternal life now. And when does now start? Now, I'm going to read this scripture. Well, first I want to do this. I had a couple posts I just put in as I was writing just to kind of a few weeks back. Have you been waiting for the benefits of heaven when all along you could have been experiencing them now? The benefits, resources, and power of God have been available since the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Don't wait any longer. Start walking in what's been yours all along. Somebody shout amen. That's me. See, I'm not, I was in this concept, in this Christianity concept that, you know, someday our ship's going to come in. You know, God's going to do our miracle, you know, and, and we'll have a testimony to give. You know, I know someday I'll be healed. And stop that. In the future, God's going to do. God has, past tense, as we know in here, done everything. Now, am I going to line up my heart, my belief system with what he's already done and start walking in it? Everybody knows we are a heart people. We've got a heart God. And unless I'm willing to change the beliefs of my heart, to line up with what God has already said and done, I probably won't experience the benefits of eternal life, even though Jesus already did it. And you can blame everybody, but God's not guilty. It's me. Now, I want to read one more. Am I waiting on God or is he waiting on me? Come on, come on, come on. I don't know what you're waiting for. <laughs> he said, go ye and ye is me, right? Have you been, so am I waiting on God? Is he waiting on me? Most people pray from a perspective that they don't have it. And God hooked me up. What if Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection finished everything and now we have been given authority on earth not to ask God, but to do what he called us to do? Time to move from a beggar to a commander. Are you, are you with me? You know, how many commanders do we have here today? I mean, we've got to start living like we have some authority. You want some of this? I mean, you guys, we're walking around like we don't have anything and we're afraid. <laughs> Sam, I mean, we have been given authority by the living God. We are to carry on what Jesus started on this planet. Well, I don't know if that's my anointing or my ministry. You've seen those people. I knew a guy that put lead bullets on his table to sell. So anytime somebody said, I didn't feel lead, he'd give them some lead to feel. Amen. I'm going to set this here. Let's look at the scripture here. And we all know this scripture uh, in Matthew chapter 6, and you know, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. You know, we've all heard it kind of in a monotone voice. And thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now, we read that. We've gone over it. We pray it in the Catholic Church if you grew up Catholic. But it's got so much more meaning that we ever got a hold of here. And so when he, just, just look at this first part, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. The word kingdom here means political or territorial unit ruled by a sovereign. When applied to God, it could refer to creation since his kingdom ruleth over all. Psalms 103, 19. But kingdom more often applies to his rule in and through those who are submitted to him. Now, I, I want you to get that. It says here, but kingdom more often applies to his rule in and through those who are submitted to him. How many people do we have that are kind of submitted to him here? <laughs> when conditions look like they work out okay. You know, so we cop little attitudes and we say, I got this, God. But what if we totally submitted to, yielded to, allowed him to take over? Would we and could we experience the most abundant life that he had for us? Let, let, let me go on here. It goes on here to say, the parables of the kingdom in Matthew 13 are clearly referring to the church. Compared with Luke 17, 21, we see that the kingdom of God is within you. Now, somebody tell me where the kingdom of God is. Remember the song, righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's the kingdom of God. If you want to be a part of the kingdom, come on. Come on, yeah. <laughs> but let me go on here to say so, more specifically, it refers to Christ living and ruling in our hearts. Christ living and ruling in our hearts, the kingdom of God, allowing Him to rule and reign in our hearts. So, praying, Thy kingdom come is praying for the expansion and influence of God's rule in the hearts of people everywhere and ultimately the establishment of his physical kingdom here on earth. I, 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 want, I want to read that one more time. Thy kingdom come is praying for the expansion and influence of God's rule in the hearts of people everywhere. Now, first of all, it's got to start with me allowing the expansion of his rule in my heart and then allowing that, all the different people from all over the world, allowing that to affect other people. Yeah. Wow. See, we're, we're in a different hour, a different day. Yeah. It's not about a group of people sitting in your church and just listening to what you've got to say. It's about releasing leaders. Oh. It's about telling people what they've got. If one thing I remember Dave doing, it was always telling people that they're loaded. Yeah. You got it. You're loaded. Come on. I don't know if Grace is here. She might be in the bar, but I remember Dave telling a bunch of his miracle stories. What did I say? The, yeah, the bar. She's in the bar. Blowing the froth off a couple cold ones in there. But I remember after Dave did some miracles and told some of these stories, Grace went to work the next day, and there was a plant that was dying in front of her office. And Grace said, in the name of Jesus, come back to life. And so she is in her office, and about noon, you know, she hears some talk going out there. And she walks out and she heard some people saying, that plant was dying and look, it's back to life again. See, the power is in your mouth with a faith in your heart to believe. And God is looking for people that will allow and bring the kingdom here on earth, what he's already done in heaven. Now, the second part of this is when it talks about thy will be done. Where? Where? As it already is in heaven. What is God's will? Some, somebody say it's his word. Is it always God's will for people to be healed? Yes. See, now that's the one that everybody gets a little nervous about. But Jesus, through his stripes, made it to where it was his will, his purpose, the stripes he took, that we aren't going to get healed, but we already are healed. And now it's our job to speak the word, lay hands on people, and walk that out. A lot of times people don't get it because they just can't believe it. Jesus was in uh, his hometown. It said he could do no mighty miracles because of their unbelief. So we're talking about the sinful son of God because they wouldn't allow him to because of their unbelief. Now, thy will be done, whatever God's will is, 
on earth. So we're supposed to start seeing it, experience it on earth as it already is going on in heaven. What, just think with me for a minute. What's happening in heaven right now? Everything is okay. Is anybody lack anything in heaven right now tonight? Is anybody sick in heaven tonight? Is anybody crying and sad and depressed and having to take their, their drugs that people take for being depressed? 